welcome to the Class Tag Hacks webinar. Um, we are going to be talking today about how to streamline all of your administrative tasks. I'm going to be showing you that and turning parents into partners and maximizing all of the time that you have for planning uh, really effective instruction uh, using Class Tag as a tool. So we are so excited that all of you are here to join us. I am very proud to say that this seems like it is our biggest webinar yet. Um, we want to invite you to make sure that you're interacting in the live chat room. So if you have questions during uh, the webinar today, Danielle is available. She is wonderful and she will be um, taking all of those questions that you have. And we're going to be taking some time to answer them in a live Q&A style at the end. So be sure if you have a question about how to use it to ask it because you're probably not the only person with that question and I'm happy to answer and demo for you that way. Um, so I think we're ready to get started. Um, so we're going to go on to the next slide. So here are the hosts. So I am Brittany. I am a kindergarten teacher. I'm going into my fifth year teaching in Connecticut and I'm also a class tag ambassador. You might have seen me on Facebook. I'm joined by Lindsay Capsa, who is an educator and parent contributor, and Danielle Fugazi, um, who is our original teacher user, and she's also our school success director. So for everybody who hangs out with us and stays until the end of the webinar, we're gonna be sending you a follow-up with two of our favorite resources. So you have to be one of the last people standing. You have to stay all the way until the end. The first thing is a set of parent communication scripts. So this basically gives you a good framework for messages that are hard to send to parents. And the other thing that we're going to be sending you is the parent letter. And it'll let parents know you're switching to class text. So if you've used something else in the past, if you're looping with your class, or if you've already sent out your parents that you're using another app, but you found class tag this earlier in the year, uh, there's a letter that we have already drafted for you to send them out to them to let them know that you're going to be switching. So for everybody who stays to the end, you're going to be getting those two free gifts. So today we're going to teach you how Class Tag will help keep you organized as a teacher with automated responses, automated tracking of notifications, and how Class Tag can help keep parents involved in your classroom and up to speed on everything that's going on, and how to set up your classroom and begin your Class Tag journey with a really fun demo piece. So just to give you a quick background on me, so like I said, I am a kindergarten teacher. I've been a Class Tag teacher for one year. I'm going into my second year using it, and I'm so excited that I have it so far ahead of time uh, before the school year begins. Last year, I found class tag at the end of September. So my school year had already started and I hadn't sent anything out about parent communication because I knew I wanted to switch from what I was using before. And I once I discovered class tag off of Pinterest, let me know if you discovered it off of Pinterest because I feel like I'm the only one. But um, after I discovered it off of Pinterest, I tried it. I fell in love with all of the organizing capabilities and how much time it saved me. Um, and I'll get more into that uh, as I talk through the demo. I'll be sharing some of like my personal experiences and Danielle's gonna be jumping in with some of hers as well. But I ultimately showed it to my entire staff and got during a faculty meeting in September and got almost the entire school onboarded last year uh, with the with a few holdouts, but we're working on it. So um, before I started using class tag, I really faced a lot of challenges. Um, so I was a new teacher uh, in my first couple years and parent communication was the hardest thing for me to incorporate proactively. There was so much going on. I had 17, four, five, and six-year-olds all in the same classroom that I was trying to keep track of and navigate learning to be a new teacher and feeling like a human Google calendar. Um, and I never found time to proactively communicate with parents outside of a printed weekly newsletter. And I had limited parent participation because nobody really read my newsletter and they didn't show up to building and classroom events and it was really devastating for my students and I felt their pain and I knew that I had to do something else. I couldn't keep making the same mistake over and over again. I couldn't just dismiss parents not being involved. And it was also on top of that really hard to stay on top of all of the administrative tasks like sending home reminders before a field trip, before school spirit day, um, 
and all of those things. There's so many notifications that go home in kids' folders every day from school. And I was spending 45 minutes cutting all these papers in half, making sure they're all organized, translated, put in the right folders, labeled with the names. It was really time consuming for me. Um, and it was a real struggle. And because that was really a struggle, and that was a struggle for me, and I know that there are a lot of coworkers and teachers who I meet today who also have similar challenges, and some of you may as well. So I want to introduce you to Lindsay. Uh, she wants to share with you some of the challenges that parents currently face when we don't have the right procedures and tools in place. So I'm gonna pass it off to her and mute myself for just a little bit. Thanks, Brittany. It's nice to be here with all of you. Um, I was a third grade teacher and building administrator for six years, and now I am a parent of a three and five year old. Um, I've always been involved in my children's education, and um, I've always been super organized as a former classroom teacher. Um, but I still ran into a few challenges when I was trying to juggle it all when my kids started school. I found that some of the challenges were that notifications and engagement was happening on multiple systems. I had conferences and volunteering opportunities and classroom updates all living in different places. Um, and building and classroom updates were in several different locations as well. So when you multiply that by two children, I just really couldn't keep up. I couldn't remember which system am I supposed to use to contact my son's teacher and where was I notified of that one date? I was constantly on a scavenger hunt for information. This really just kind of led to confusion and disorganization and unfortunately less engagement from my side. Um, after all the digging and trying to keep on top of everything, I actually was one of the parents that missed the notification of early dismissal. So my son's office had to call and say, Ms. Scapsa, you need to pick your son up. We dismissed 20 minutes ago. Of course, I drove as fast as I could within the limit to get to my son and pick him up. Um, but it led to a lot of disappointment and a lot of hurt feelings. So I know that I had missed opportunities when I was um, wanting to be there and I knew that there was a better solution. So now that we've kind of shared some of our challenges and some of our lessons learned, I am excited for Brittany to show you and how just a few minutes you can avoid running into these situations and these challenges for yourself. And she's going to show you today how to set up class tag and some of her favorite features. Okay, bear with me for just one minute while I switch to the class tag homepage. So here we are at the class tag homepage. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when you get here is make sure that all of your parents are added. So you're gonna go to the directory. It's over on the left-hand side. Once you click on it, you'll see that your name is up there. And if you work with another teacher, you can add a teacher to your classroom. So a classroom can have more than one teacher. Uh, if you work in a co-teaching model, this is especially helpful. As you can see, I have already added um, some students to my class and I need to add their parent contact information. So I'm gonna click on the student or I'm gonna click, forgive me, I'm gonna click edit directory and I'm gonna add Billy Bob's parent. And I'm gonna set their language that they prefer as Japanese. And then I'm gonna add that student. So there's a copy of their contact information. Class tag will let you know right away if the parent phone number is a working number or not and if the email um, is as well. I made a mock one for this so that it works. So that's how you set the language from your side. You can, if you don't wanna go through all of that one at a time, you can also copy it from a spreadsheet. So if you have a spreadsheet that has student name, parent, um, student name, parent name, parent phone number, parent email, 
Um, that usually can be really easily exported from an attendance taking software. Uh, you just need to copy and paste it over and it will go in all at once instead of having to set each individual student. Class tag will also tell you what percent of the families are connected. So after you invite parents to your classroom, you are going to want to make sure that you approve the supply list. So the supply list, and while the screen is switching, it's going to be at the top of the home page. So it's in a draft mode. So each class, uh, when you sign up for class tag, the supply list that will be assigned to you goes with the grade that you picked when you signed up. So if you haven't signed up yet and you pick a grade, Keep in mind that this is the pre-made supply list that will pop up for you. And it's really made by teachers. And it has all of the supplies that I would actually put on it myself. Markers, crayons, erasers, glue sticks. We all know that kids need that. Primary beginner pencils with a big grip. Uh, scissors with a blunt tip. So what I really love about this, I'm going to show you, is you can go into the details. So if you want to change this list at all, you can customize it. You can click add a supply if you need to add something extra, or you can click up here on the gear and you can remove things from the list if that's something that you're not going to use. But I want to show you that there are required supplies and there are optional supplies. So you can let parents know what is the priority. You can also go in and add details. So I already added a detail for the scissors, so I'm going to add a detail for the pencils now. The pencils detail, I'm going to write golf pencils because I don't want the students to have erasers because I want to see all the mistakes they make. So I'm going to save that. And then when the parent goes to see it at checkout, when they click on it, it will fill a Amazon or Walmart shopping cart. One click, it'll fill the entire thing. And they have an option to change any of the things that end up in their cart. But you want to go through, make sure it's good. You add the comments. And then you're going to come back to the top and see here it says working on it. You're actually going to click that. You don't have to drag it or anything. Just click it. It'll work. The toggle will switch to ready, and that means that the list is ready to share. It's not going to send out an email to parents and blast and say the list is ready. So if you feel like you made it ready, but then you wanted to make a change, you can move it back and forth. But after you say that the list is ready, you're going to want to go back to the class tag homepage and use one of the next features, which is to add an announcement. So you can click up here on the add button and press announcement. We want to title it appropriately. So we want to let everybody know that the supply list is ready. Oh, something I didn't mention before, um, and I'll go back to it in just a minute, is that the supply list can also be printed out if parents don't want to purchase supplies online. So as a last resort, if they need to print it out, they can. Uh, please check for supplies. Contact me with any questions. You can also add a send time so you can customize when you want this to go out. If you'd rather this go out on Monday the 19th when the parent portal is opened, you can do that. That's just an example of something that I have upcoming. You can also attach files, photos, or videos. So if you'd like to attach additional photos of the supplies uh, or additional options for the supplies, you could do that here. Um, and then you're going to want to pin this announcement so that it goes to the top of your homepage. And let me show you what that looks like when we get there. So you're going to go through the process, and I'm going to unpin it, but I'll show you when we get to the homepage how, what pinned announcements look like. I've already pinned too many. So we're going to press preview, and this is what it will look like when a parent receives it as an email. So parents can pick if they get notifications via email or text. So when you scroll through, you can see supply list is ready. Please check for supplies. If you put any photos here, it'll pop up. Then there's also a text. Um, and this is what it will look like if parents receive it as a text. They'll get a link directly to it. They can respond directly to the text, and it, they don't have to log in if you send them a message. It will, they can respond to the text directly, and the message will come to your inbox as they texted it. I'm going to send that out. And we are done. Um, it'll also be automatically translated, so if you need to print it for a student, here is the wonderful life-saving stork that comes up on the class tag homepage. I love this feature. This is a reminder. It says, we recommend printing a copy of Supply List is Ready to Send Home in Billy Bob's Backpack. So we're going to print a copy, and it's going to have the student's name 
and it's going to be translated already. All right, so this student was English. I didn't pick another language for that one. So now uh, we've already looked at the supply list. We've looked at the announcements. We're going to take a look at activities because this is a great way to get everything set up for the year and let parents know ahead of time what's going on. So here are some parent-teacher conferences that I've already created. I'm going to go in and edit them, but if you wanted to create it because you haven't created it yet, you just press create and come down to parent-teacher conference right here from the top menu. But if I open the parent-teacher conference, I'm going to show you what it looks like in the edit mode. So here is my parent-teacher conference. As you can see, I've already set 23 different time slots. I've spread them across two days, but I'm going to show you how to add a time slot. So you'll just scroll to the bottom of the screen and press create time slot because it remembers the increment. If you look up, you'll notice that all of the conferences are listed with a half hour increment. So I'm going to press create time slot and that's how it's added. It's really easy. Um, then you'll press continue. And um, before, actually, backtrack, rewind, rewind. Um, you'll see that there are 24 time slots with three students. So it lets you know if you created enough time slots. If you teach uh, a number of students, we had this at our last webinar, um, there was somebody who taught such a large number of students that it wasn't possible for every parent to have a parent-teacher conference. You can just set however many time slots you're planning on offering and then share it out to parents that way. Um, so class tag won't stop you, but it will remind you if you don't have enough time slots for parents or students, rather. Uh, then you'll title it, add a little bit of detail. If it's a student-led conference, you'll want to let them know in the details to bring their student with them. Uh, remind them about the classroom number, or if it's going to be held in a different setting in the school, let them know that way. And then this is what it's going to look like. This is a preview. So it has details, location, all the time slots across multiple days, and then you can submit that and create it. So. Here are the automatic reminders that save you a lot of time. There is a weekly summary. So every week, this event is going to be included in the weekly summary because it's parent-teacher conferences. Then parents who sign up for a request will be given a gentle reminder two days ahead of time and then again at 7 a.m. on the day of the parent-teacher conference. For parents who haven't signed up yet, class tag kind of takes the nagging off of your back and does it for you. If it, the requests are left unfilled, parents who have not signed up are going to be notified on Tuesdays and then additionally 5, 10, and 15 days before the event actually occurs. So they're going to get plenty of notifications if they haven't signed up, and that takes a lot of work off of your back and can make sure that you have good parent-teacher communication with every parent in your class if that's possible and feasible for you. We are now going to talk a little bit about office hours. Now, this is a feature that when I joined ClassTag wasn't available, but they just released it over the summer this year, and I am so glad that they did because it promotes a healthy work-life balance. So you're going to come to the class settings. Oh, no, it's not this way. Okay, forgive me. This is a real life teachable moment where I'm gonna show you how to use the class tag support. So I don't know how to change my classes office hours. So I'm going to click on the little chat bubble that's right down here in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm gonna type it, I'm gonna search down. So you can chat any of the people who work for class tag they're highly responsive amazing real people real people here's danielle uh she's with us today but i'm actually going to search for it in the articles because there's lots of articles that you can use to help yourself figure things out i'm just going to type in office hours you want to type in just the subject of what you want help with so when i press search how can i set my office hours is the first thing that came up and that's exactly what i want to know how to do So here's the article. 
I'm going to scroll. Okay, here we go. I'm going to press here. And then I'm going to go to account settings. Yes, that's what it wanted me to do. And then next, and see, here's the helpful arrow, tells you exactly where to click. Then I'm going to go to communications. I can see it right here. Scroll down. And I don't need any more help because I know where I am. Thanks. So I'm going to clear those out of my way. Now here are my office hours. So I have office hours on. If you're okay with being reached at any time, any anytime, doesn't matter to you when parents message you, turn it off. But for me, I can't I can't ignore a parent. So I need this on so that I can work and respond to parents during certain hours of the day. I'm not unfortunately available at everybody's disposal 24 seven. So here I am, I've added Monday, Wednesday, Friday office hours from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. That means that I'll be received, receiving active messages. What I haven't set are my office hours for Tuesday, Thursday. So I'm gonna click add a day. And from here, I can select custom days of the week. And from these days, I will be available till five. Cause I have spin class. And then I'm gonna save changes. So when parents try to message you, they can still message you, you'll receive the message, but you won't get a push notification. So it won't pop up on your home screen of your phone or if you um, get notifications that way, it won't come through as a text immediately. It will come through when your office hours resume. So for example, if your office hour, somebody messaged you at 7 p.m. on a Monday night, you wouldn't get the notification that they messaged you until Tuesday at 8 a.m. And that's just to really kind of help you stay focused and help us avoid all of the extra notifications that are constantly present in our lives these days in the 21st century. So there's all that. Um, now I'm going to show you how to set activities and organize, organize that way. So there are, this is a, an amazing, I like think of it like a funnel. So all of these features are available in one place. You can schedule your parent teacher conferences. You can post um, parent contact information. In the directory, you can also enable parents to communicate with each other. For me, as a kindergarten teacher, I you can it's a setting, you can enable it or not. I enabled it because that took organizing play dates off of my to-do list uh, and sharing parent contact information with each other. I just got a waiver at the beginning of the year that said, I don't um, sign if you are okay with sharing your contact information with everybody. Everybody agreed, so I was able to check that box and have parents organize things that way. They also organized class parties and class gifts for me. Thank you so much um, that way. So here we go with the um, activities and events. So I'm going to create an event because that is going to encompass a volunteer request and a to-do item. Those are small parts of the event but can also be posted on their own. But I'm gonna show you this way because it's all in one. So let's say we are going to have our class Thanksgiving feast. I'm scheduling it early. We will dress up, share poems, and eat. Kids will share books they have written about turkeys. So the location is gonna be our classroom room six, and I'm gonna set the time so that parents know when to show up. So let's say this event is going to start at, I usually prefer 1.30 as a start time. My kids get back from special at about five after, so that gives us a good amount of time to work with. And we'll end it at three, so that goes almost to the end of the day, so if you'd like to take your child for dismissal with you when you go, you can. Um, so for this event, I'm going to request some volunteers. We're gonna need some people to help set it up and help break it down. So set up, I need three people to come help me. And the time is 1.30 to three o'clock. So if you're coming for setup, I'm really gonna ask you to get there at one o'clock so you can be early. And then you can stay till the end if you want, uh, not necessary. Then I'm going to request another volunteer in a different time shift. Uh, for a breakdown. I'm gonna ask three people to do that and they can show up right on time at 
and then they need to stay a little bit longer though, sorry, till 3.15. And then let's say we need a couple items. So I've got almost everything ready, but we need a pizza and I'm wondering if anybody would like to volunteer to bring in four pizzas because we're really hungry and we love pizza. Um, we would like this to be due by 1.30 p.m. I'm going to say 1 o'clock because I'd like to make sure that the food is there before everybody gets there so there's no surprises in case something happens, somebody couldn't follow through with their promise. I'm going to require an RSVP. Uh, so checking this box means that you want everybody to respond um, yes or no if they're going to come. And then press preview and create it. So that was a to-do item and a volunteer request all in one. Um, it's going to attach to this activity. You don't have to add those on, but I'm just showing you how to use all three features in one, one take. So you're going to press done. And so parents who, here's the wonderful rundown of all the automatic reminders parents will get. They'll get reminders 5, 10, 15 days at a time. And then um, if they have an RSVP, they're going to get response. It reminds, if they have RSVP, they'll get reminded uh, two days ahead of time and at 7 a.m. the day of. If they haven't, they'll get notified more often and uh, with higher frequency. And it'll also go out on Tuesdays. And it'll go out also in your weekly summary. So press announce and preview it. And there it goes. I'm gonna send that out and parents will receive it. Done. Um, so that is the conclusion of my demo for now. Uh, we're gonna be doing some more one-on-one -on -one, um, kind of like answering questions and I'll be showing you some things on the website, um, but we are gonna talk a little bit first before we go into that. So give me one second to switch the display. Okay, so that was just a really, really, really quick setup, right? Um, so not to mention it's completely free for everybody forever. Um, ClassFact does not believe in charging teachers or educational institutions for using our platform. Um, and what's most important is that you can see that we solved the communication problems, participation from parents, and organizing all of that information and challenges so quickly for teachers just using this platform. In addition, we can seamlessly make sure that parents never feel lost when it comes to being kept up to date on what's going on in your classroom. They'll never feel overwhelmed. They're, they'll never feel left out. All they need to do is open the app, get online, check the website, or look at the paper flyers that get printed out um, if they can't do any of those things. So you might be thinking, I already use another app. Um, I already use another method that helps me stay on top of all these things. But here's why Class Tag helps us really stick out and stand out from other platforms. Um, you can quickly reach all parents um, based on their preference. So they'll get a text or an email. They can download the app. They'll get a notification or they can log in online. And if they can't do any of those things, you can print out notifications for them that are translated ready to go. With the click of just one button, your message is translated and out to everybody. So you don't have to print flyers for these people, do a Facebook group for these people, find, download WhatsApp and text these teachers and then, I mean, these parents, and then also have like the five parents in your class who actually adopted the other app, um, which class tag helps with 100% adoption because you can input parent information for them so you don't have to depend on them to get signed up. They'll get an automatic invitation. So that's no longer your responsibility to track them down, make sure they sign up. They'll continuously get some invitations and they can accept or deny to be involved in their child's education. Um, then there's also time saving coordination aspects. So it's because it's a single, it's a single platform and it does so many things. 
parents don't miss anything and class tag does all of the reminding for you so if you're familiar with us you've also heard about a rewards program and if you haven't heard about a rewards program it's just about everybody's favorite including mine um class tag rewards can help you to earn free rewards for your classroom just by doing things that you already do so communicating with parents so just by using the platform messaging parents posting events doing your amazing thing that you do as a teacher you get class tag coins and that is a digital currency that can be redeemed for free supplies for your class um and one thing that i thought was really amazing that i heard from a teacher that i met at ISTE was that once i told him about the rewards platform he said that's great i teach sixth grade so i'm gonna have my students pick what our reward is and then i'm gonna tell them to make sure that their parents get on class tag and respond and press like or comment on whatever it is that we've posted or just view it respond to messages and get involved and sign up for things. Um, so using this as a community aspect to help kids earn the reward that is offered anyway, um, that they can redeem those coins. So they are soup. that is just like a really amazing way about doing it. But since we're in a room full of teachers and this is a safe space for teachers, I'm going to ask Danielle to jump in here uh, for a few mass, a few last minute details uh, to share with you our official exit ticket. And I know that we all live as an exit ticket as teachers, right? So um, here's Danielle, and she is just gonna talk to you a little bit about that. Hi everyone, um, I hope you're enjoying our webinar and you're getting ready for back to school. I just wanna quickly introduce myself. Um, I was an educator for six years. I taught kindergarten through third grade. I was also an assistant principal, and I've had a chance to use Class Tag in all of its awesome ways and dynamics. Um, and it's been so much fun to see how it's transformed over the years since I was one of the first users. Um, I would say my two most favorite features of Class Tag are the weekly summaries because the more that you put into Class Tag with dates and times, it's going to basically reward you by giving all of those dates and times in an organized way to parents. You can personalize the message and it's very simple. The other um, feature I love, and I saw a comment, I forgot who said it, um, asking about signups if you want parents to bring stuff into the classroom. Um, so a story I'll quickly tell you about that is I had my end of the year party and it was so easy to manage and create. I basically found all the items I wanted with my class parents, I put it in, um, into class tag and my party had all the materials it needed. I had the best food. We even had activities to go along. I had volunteers that were able to sign up and it was amazing. So if you're excited to um, have some class parties, you can definitely use class tag for that. So to, since we're more towards the end of the webinar and Brittany had a chance to explain to you all the amazing features of class tag, I thought a fun way to make sure that you're all set and ready to go is to do a fun exit ticket. So if you're feeling like you're ready to go, and that's number one, meaning green, um, then you should be all set and ready to set up your class tag account, um, add some dates and time, start reaching out to parents, and setting up your directory. If you have um, some more questions and you're a number two, or you want me to reach out to you personally and help you walk through some of our features and setting up your classroom, you're going to email support at classtag.com. Again, you're going to email support at classtag.com. And the support team, as well as myself, will get back to you right away. Make sure that you have everything you need, all your questions are answered, so you're ready to have a successful year using ClassTag. So now we're going to give you about two to three minutes to start using ClassTag, open up your account, use some of the features that Brittany ta taught you about today, and we're going to do some Q and A in about. See what it was. <laughs> I said I'm just excited. I'm seeing a lot of ones. Sorry, oh, I didn't mean to. Talk about I'm seeing this now. Look at all these ones. Also, um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to put into the chat right now. Um, Class mm -hmm. has an amazing website where you can basically type in any question you have, and articles will populate based on what your needs are. So I'm gonna put that in the chat right now for you. I also shared our um, 
back to school launch kit. I don't know if that went through. Oh, is that for the people who want to share it with their building? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, here. Let me uh, change to the next slide. It might be on there. Okay. It is. Oh, it should be. It's under our, I think the, I think it's under our videos. So it's right under Danielle. So I'll actually make myself disappear, Danielle. This is your time to shine. Okay. So yes, again, if you're feeling number two, I still, I still have some questions. Or you're feeling a number three, I need more help. Um, I'm not confident yet. You are going to email support at classtag.com. And one of our amazing support members will reach out, help you. I love to be able to have phone calls and get a chance to learn your needs, what you're excited about for the school year. So I hope that uh, a lot of you will reach out to me and so we can connect and get you all set up for the school year. So I'm sending right now our website for our help center. Like I said, that's mm -hmm. any question you have, you can just type it into the search bar and an article will populate for your needs. And I shared it earlier, but I'm going to give you our launch kit. This is an amazing tool for, for you to use when setting up your classroom, but also to help your parents. So I'm gonna put that in right now. Okay. And also, you don't have to wait until you have your list of students to join class tag and create your classroom. You can create your classroom without necessarily adding to the directory. And what's great about doing it ahead of time is that the sooner that you sign up, the sooner that you'll start earning your monthly coin. Um, it's like a monthly coin income. So basically just for being a member and being signed up, you get a certain number of coins every month. So even if you're just ready ahead of time, that's great. And there's also the demo classroom feature. So when everybody signs up, they get a demo classroom so they can play with all of the features and get familiar with how to use the platform. Um, some of the student names in there are really funny, like Daffy Duck and other cartoon characters, but that's a really good way to get familiar and comfortable with the platform before you start sharing it with parents and getting parent questions. Um, and I see that Sherry asked, uh, parents won't know who their child's teacher is until the 19th. Same with me in my district. Um, how do you make sure that nothing gets sent to them until after the 19th? Well, as soon as you add parents to the directory, as soon as you put their phone number in there, they're going to get an infant invitation. So in your case, I would recommend holding off until the 19th, but still activating and having your classroom open because whether or not students are entered in the directory doesn't impact the um, whether or not you're earning coins or if your classroom is active or not. Um, and I'm also going to take some time to show you the whole rewards area um, of the platform. So I'm going to switch to our lovely website. And I'm going to show you the whole reward center. So on the left-hand tab here, click rewards. So here are some really cool things to learn about rewards. So if you want to get 150 coins and you want another teacher to get 150 coins, you can refer them here. So you'll just click get 150 coins, type in their email address or phone number, and they'll just get an invitation that says, hey, someone is recommending class tag to you if and when they sign up you will get 150 coins and they will get 150 coins. So this is really helpful, especially if you are trying to sign up your whole class. You can also share your referral link, uh, just really easy copy and paste. And we have a shortcut down here for Facebook, WhatsApp, and Twitter. Uh, but here in the Rewards Center, you're gonna see how many coins you have as a balance. So I have 50 coins, I've earned 50 coins so far this year with this demo class and I haven't purchased anything. So the reward center is customized based on the grade level that you input at your sign up. So people who teach kindergarten are gonna see rewards that are more relevant for them and people who teach sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade are gonna see rewards that are more appropriate for them. They won't necessarily see the kindergarten level rewards. Um, so you can see that there's free lessons from Nearpod, free teacher memes, there's some animation software, name plates. Uh, this past year, I earned a Teachers Pay Teachers gift card and uh, also an Amazon gift card. You can see here they have an Aaron Condren gift card. 
I also got some glue sticks and Clorox wipes. So uh, there's a huge full, full reward center here. And the more you use the platform, um, the more coins you'll redeem every month and be able to apply towards the reward store here. Um, and it's changed every month. So there's new things all the time. I think there was, I'm not sure if there still is, there was a really cool KiwiCo box subscription on here. Um, but there's a lot of different things. You can also get a donors choose gift card, which would be great if you have a donors choose account, or if you know somebody else who has one, it would be great to donate to their classroom. Um, and that's the great features of our rewards. Um, you'll just need to go through a verification email uh, and then you'll be able to get gift cards and whatever it is that you want and or need. So Danielle, do we have any requests? Oh, we have. I've been populating them up. They're all ready to go. Okay. Um, okay. First one, how do parents contact me? Can you please show this? Okay, so parents will contact you via a message. So right up here, there's a chat bubble. That is your direct messaging feature. So when they message you, it's not going to go to your personal phone number. They don't see your personal phone number. All of that information is kept private. It'll come here to your inbox. You'll get a one-on-one -on -one message. Um, you can also create group messages if you need to send a message to just a certain number of parents, or you can send out things whole class using the announcements feature. So it'll be right here. If you want to start a message with a parent, simply click here, press next, and type in whatever it is that you want to share. And then press send. So they'll get that message. It shows you who the participants are. And then you can go back to the home page and you'll get a response to the to whatever your preferred contact method is. So if it's the app, you'll get a notification to the app. If you for you, the teacher, um, if it's email or text, you get it to wherever you prefer. Same with the parent. Next, next one, we have to enter all the parent information. They don't, do they sign up or do we enter their information? So you can do it one of two ways or three ways really. You can input parents one by one, like I showed you before. I'm gonna come over to the directory just to clarify. But you can also print out a um, parent invitation. So once you add all of the student names to class tag, like I said, if you don't wanna type them all in, you can copy and paste it from a spreadsheet. But once you have all of these students there, you can actually print parent invitations for them. And then class tag will generate automatically translated PDFs for the students. Are you ready for me, Brittany? Are you still working? Uh, I'm just scrolling down to show the. Okay. And this one is in Japanese because I picked uh, Japanese for Billy Bob, but you can see it has his name at the top. And it's all in Japanese, ready to go. And then these are in English. So they're all personalized. They have the name on it, ready to go. I'm ready for the next one. If a parent doesn't use the app, will they receive a message from ClassTag or our personal phone? They will receive a message from class tag, even if they don't use the app. So it will just come from one of those short six digit uh, text numbers. So they'll get a text. And if I go into the activities, I can show you a quick preview of what that would look like. Um, but they'll get it as a text that basically states the title and then they'll get another text with the link. Um, if you send them a direct message, they can just type whatever they want to say in a direct reply to that message and it'll come to your class tag inbox just the way that they typed it. What happens if um, a user used class tag last year and they still have an open classroom? What should they do? So, so you have to do what I just did a couple days ago and you need to come to your account settings. I believe it's account settings. Nope, it's not. It is. It's the other way. And see, I'm still a novice. I'm not perfect. 
So if I go to the class settings, uh, you can graduate the class, which will basically archive it. So at the end of the year, it will update it. I'm going to click through that really quick. But um, while Danielle tells me the next question, just so we can save a little bit of time here. So you can click, would you like to graduate this class? Graduate, and then that would make it basically archived. You don't get active notifications. Parents won't get active notifications. They will no longer be able to um, interact basically using that class. So just class settings and graduate. What happens if a teacher teaches more than one section and wants to share a classroom? Here you go. Okay, so you're gonna come over to the little three lines of blue and you're gonna click add a new class. So you can create a complete different section, uh, as many sections as you want. There's also no limit on the number of students that you can add per class section. So it can all go there. You can also send out notifications to your class and some of your other sections, as well as if you're connected to a school, and I'm not on this demo account right now, but if you're connected to a school and you scroll down to the bottom of your announcements, you can. there's a little checkbox that says, include in other classrooms, and you can push it out through multiple classrooms in your school. But you can also notify sections um, all, more than one at once using this as well. But that's how you add more than one section. I had, uh, I had a user ask, can you explain more about the coins that you receive in the reward section? When do you get cashed out? Uh, so you get coins once a month. I am actually not sure what specific day of the month it is, but I would assume it's the end of the month. Um, and I'm sure I can reach out to Sam, who is in charge of our rewards program, and ask her when exactly during the month the coins are dispersed. But I can trust you that you do get a number of coins with regular usage, not over usage, with regular usage every month. Is there a feature that allows us to upload documents as attachments? Yes. So if you come to the activities, um, when you send out an announcement, you can see here that it's, it just said send photo file or videos to everybody. So all you need to do is if you're on a Mac, drag and drop or click upload um, on any computer, click there and it will take you into your finder window and you can choose what files you'd like to upload and share with families. The files will stay attached to those announcements and as long as those announcements, um, and it will stay on your feed forever and attached there forever. So if you wanna post a student handbook, that's a really helpful way to um, post it ahead of time so it's an evergreen resource parents can access all year. What's next? Do you know how to use class tag to communicate from with administration, so teacher to administration? So once I have joined, I'm not sure if that's a question asking if I could do teacher to teacher messaging or if administration can post through my class. Um, if it's the latter question, administration can view your class and post through your class. So I got my whole school on board. My principal was able to click in and view my class. And if he wanted to post whole school announcements about a snow day, whatever it was, he could post that. Um, and it would go through every single class that was activated and actively being used on class tech. Um, as far as directly messaging other teachers using the platform, I'm not too familiar and I would actually need to ask Mark. I have to admit that. I had a chance to reach out to Mark and he just got back to me. Oh, and lovely. If your administration wants to reach out to you directly, they would create a classroom of all the teachers. Oh, okay. That's that would allow them to send communication and information directly to the teachers. That's a real hack. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's all the questions we have for today, Brittany. Thank you so much for walking us through everything. Yeah, thank you for manning the chat and thank you everybody for coming and joining us today. I'm so glad that you gave up your time uh, over the summer if you're here as a person who's still on summer vacation. And if you are a teacher who is already teaching and begun your year, uh, good luck to you and thank you for showing up even though I know it's a really, really busy time. All right, I think that concludes our webinar.
Thank you so much, everybody. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of the week. If you need any help or have any questions, be sure to check us out on Facebook. We have a class tag Facebook page in addition to a class tag educators lounge, where if you have any questions, you can go and chat with other teachers who use class tag and hear about their class tag hacks. All right. Have a great night. Bye, everyone. I just posted the link to the webinar from today. If you you didn't get a chance to come in right at the beginning or you want to view it at a later time. Okay. Awesome.